Coming out here after 30 years, yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality, you know, and uh, I'm rich in love, my family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts. Shout out to everybody out there on Team Banky Pam, man, I appreciate the love, I appreciate the support. We out here, man, 33 years of prison stores, we grinding, we rolling, we grinding every day, putting out this positive energy, man. Salute to all the new subscribers. Salute to all the people that have joined this movement. It's big love over here. It's positive energy only. Tell a friend to tell a friend, man. We out here, man. And uh, we rolling, man. 80, 80K, 80K, 100 and something uh, subscribers. We on the road to 100K, man. Let's get it. Let's go. TBP Nation. Salute. Man, I'm working on the road for y'all, man. I'm on the road, man. Y'all see I'm on the move, but I'm trying to keep this positive energy coming. I'm trying to keep these videos rolling. And um, you got to do what you got to do, man. We out here. We working and we out here. Uh, today, man, I don't know what I want to. I don't know why I want to talk about this, man. But I guess it's just something, man, because I saw a couple of my little youngins yesterday. So it just brought it up in my mind. We was just reminiscing about stuff in prison and everything, man, and just talking about how how good it was to be out here, man. You know, how good it was. Um, I think my little youngin that I saw yesterday, I think he got out just uh, a little bit before I did. So we have been out here probably close to four years. And, you know, I've been out here three and some change. So we was just talking about the struggle, man, how, long, how hard it was, you know, to get this freedom, man, and how you in there, and then they hold you all of this time, all of this time, and you can't get out, you want to get out, you can't get out, and ain't nothing you can do, it ain't nothing you can say, it ain't no tears you can shed, it ain't no nothing, man, you ain't getting out until they open them doors, and man, that don't be like, when you do get out, it's like they open the doors and let you out, you're like, man, all this time I'm trying to get out, and you just gonna let me go, it's just like overwhelming, it's, it's really a, a surreal feeling, that, you know, you wouldn't understand because as soon as you walk through them gates, man, you just get so paranoid. Like, how could I just be let go after you just wouldn't never let me out? Nothing I did, nothing, you know, it's just crazy. It's just a, um, it's a funny feeling. But we was talking about that and just made us think about prison, man, and the way it is in there. And I'm telling you right now, I, I truly believe it is one of the, it is probably the most loneliest place on the planet. You know what I'm saying? And I know that sounds um, crazy because you're surrounded by people all day, but you are absolutely positively lonely, man. You feel alone because of the simple fact that everybody that you're surrounded by has no, absolutely uh, no concerns, no uh, feelings, no anything about your well-being, you know, and you trust no one. So you by yourself because you're not around any type of genuine love for, for the most part. You know, as time go on and you do your bit, you're going to run into a couple of cats, man, that you, you know, that you bond with, that you consider as brothers and this, that, and the third. It's going to be few and far in between, especially it was for me. It definitely was for me. But at the same time, you always still feel lonely. You know what I'm saying? It's just a different feeling when you're in prison. It's a different feeling than you out here on the street. And no matter what you're going through, you know you got some family. You got somebody. Even the people that's going through things feel like, um, I, even they, the ones that's going through things with their family, they got somebody in their family, somebody they grew up with, somebody they know that you feel like you connected to. When you were in prison, man, it's just like such a great 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 disconnect man where even you know you got loved ones on the street to love you and wait for you but as time go on you so far away from them you see them so little um that it's like you just feel alone all the time you and, and basically you are you are you are alone because there's the difference in prison and on the street is there's no one coming to your aid no one you know this for sure there's no one coming to your aid in need of crisis when you're on the street and something go bad, you get in an accident or whatever, whatever, you get sent to the hospital. Somebody going to show up at the hospital to see if you're all right. Somebody going to, you know, make some calls. Somebody going to see what's going on. Somebody going to check on you. That cannot happen in prison. 
that ain't happening in prison. Whatever goes on with you, whatever happened to you, man, that's what it is. They're not even going to know until you are capable and able of calling them and let them know. And then even then, they can't do nothing about it. So a lot of people just defer. They don't even let them know what's going on with them in prison because they know that they, they helpless to do anything about it. You know, so that puts you in a state of, of, of loneliness, man, all the time, man. And especially these young young dudes that come into prison. You know, I went in young, but people come in younger than me. When you young and these young fellas is out here, man, even in, in the young queens as well, y'all out here and y'all moving around in life. When you young like that, man, you got so much support that you don't even know it. You don't even respect it. You don't even appreciate it when you got a roof to lay your uh to lay your, your head down in, man, when you got clothes on your back, when you got breakfast in the morning, when you got somebody, when you're young, probably washing your clothes, you know, buying your clothes, um, feeding you, you know, doing all these things. When you go to prison, all of that is removed. You got to do all of that yourself. And a lot of people have never done that themselves, especially when they're young. You know what I'm saying? They ain't used to fixing their own food every day. You're going to have to fix your own food every day unless you're going to try to survive off of that, that garbage that they serving you. You know, so you're going to have to fix your own food every day. You're going to have to be responsible for washing your clothes. You're going to have to be responsible for uh, cleaning up behind yourself. And a lot of people that come to prison is young. You know, all the time, your parents been doing most of these things for you for the most part. But now when you get in there, man, you, you, you realize how much you buy yourself. You alone, you by yourself, it ain't no help coming, it ain't no aid, ain't nobody trying to help you in prison. Ain't nobody trying to do nothing for you in prison besides take advantage of you, uh, con you, flim flam you out of something, beat you out of what you already got, try to cut into what you got going on. It ain't none of that going on. It ain't none of that. That's when you start to realize how, you know, not as bad of your life that you thought it was when you was out there. When everything ain't going the way you are, oh, ain't my life so no, you don't know what messed up is until you get up in a place where you by yourself all the time. All the time. When you got to fend for yourself all the time. When you got to do these things that need to be done by yourself. You know, when you hurt, you got to be, you know, healed by yourself. No comfort, no, you know, loved ones around you, no support. By yourself. Loneliest place in the world, man. And when them doors close, Mm. It's, a, it's a different feeling, man. When you lay down on that hard, cold bunk at night and you by yourself and that hard plastic pillow is crinkling in your ear and, you know, you in this steel concrete room and with somebody on a bunk that you don't know, don't care about, he don't know you, don't care about you, uh... 80 some other people on the outside of that door that feel the same way, don't care nothing about you, you realize right then and there, man, that, man, I'm on my own. You know what I'm saying? I'm on my own, you know, and um, that's a surreal feeling, man. That's a that's a uh, depressing feeling. That's why a lot of dudes get depressed in prison and they can't overcome it because it's too overwhelming for them. They had too much, which they, on the street, they probably feel like they didn't have enough, but when they get in prison, they realize they had too much support on the street. Your mother, your father, your uncle, your your grandma, your, your brother, your, your sister, your somebody was doing some things for you that made life easier for you and you didn't appreciate it and you didn't understand it until you had to do it for yourself. You understand? Until you had to do it for yourself. You know, that's why you got a lot of dudes in there, man, that, that, that um, the hygiene is so messed up. You know what I'm saying? Because they ain't washing their clothes the way they supposed to. They ain't taking showers the way they supposed to. They ain't doing all these things because they was never, you know, taught these things. These things that they come into prison so young that they, their parents was telling them to do. Clean up your room, man. And do this, do it. Them dudes ain't washing no clothes on the street. <laughs> young cats ain't washing no clothes on the street. They ain't washing their own clothes. Their mama and, or daddy or somebody washing their clothes. You know what I'm saying? They don't even have these type of life skills to be put in a situation where they're alone in life and they got to fend for themselves. That's why a lot of them can't handle it. You know, they can't handle it. That's why we, we need to appreciate what we have when we got it. You know what I'm saying? Stop complaining, man, and start understanding that in order to, to, to make it through this world, man, you're going to need some help. 
you're going to need some help, man. And you're going to need to be around people that's encouraging. You're going to need to be around people that's, you know, uh, going to do some of these things and point you in the right direction, man, and give you the right advice, man. But we got to know it when we hear it. You got to know it when you hear it, man. Because when you get into prison, I'm trying to tell you, man, you're going to feel like the whole world have caved down on you, man. And you're going to feel like you can't breathe. And you're going to feel like it ain't no way out. And there isn't. There isn't. So you're going to have to be able to compartmentalize and get it together, man, and deal with it, man. But, man, I done went through so much depression while I was in there, man. I, I can't even explain it to you. You know what I'm saying? I, all these things that I'm saying now, that's how I felt. And this the conversation that we was having yesterday. And I was saying, man, you just feel like you're by yourself. And once you, you're going to have, it's something in your head going to have to click. It's something in your head going to have to click to say, man, my mom can't help me. Man, my brother can't help me. My sister can't help me. My uncle can't. I'm by myself. And that's going to have to click. And you're going to have to start living like that and understanding that. That's another reason a lot of dudes come home and they can't adapt. It depends upon how long they were locked up and how strong their brain was. But they come home and they can't adapt because now they done got into this certain type of way of living. You know what I'm saying? This the only way they know this is what their key to survival has been. So then to come out here and people expect you to just snap back and be able to be like, oh, well, you in, that's the main thing they always say. Well, you ain't in prison no more. Well, I know I ain't in prison no more. But you know what I'm saying? These things is going on in my head, man. This PTSD is real. You know what I'm saying? That's super real, dog. It's super real. Because how can you expect to live a certain way every day of your life and then automatically change? You know what I'm saying? That's a process and everything. But, man, um, it, 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 it's, it's just a, such an overwhelming feeling of loneliness in prison, man, to be around people every day. And, and that's the irony. And you're never alone. You are never alone, but you are always lonely crazy you never alone you're gonna have a sale partner you can't go nowhere by yourself you ain't gonna be nowhere by yourself in prison you always gonna be being watched by camera officer inmate convict somebody you always being watched but you always feel alone you feel lonely in a place that's full and packed with people if y'all can understand that that's just real man you know what i'm saying you never felt like you know you had you know, in prison that you got like somebody ran you or, or, or that you, you know, you, I need this, I need that. And somebody's going to automatically be there. Or if this happened, I know that's going to happen. Nah, even when you got partners and even when you, you know, you know that these dudes going to stand with you, they going to move with you when you move and do this and do that. You still got to worry about if the situation is be too dire or too dangerous, if somebody going to flake out. Is somebody would you rather trust your back to you or you trust your back to somebody that you think might have your back? Because that's a calculated risk that you might take that might cost you your life. You know what I'm saying? And I had dudes and I had partners over the years, man, that was super cool with me that I felt like, you know, that you know, I could turn my back and I know they got my back. Dudes like Dixon, you know, a lot of other cats, a couple of other cats, not a lot, a couple of other cats that I know like that. But at the same time, you still taking a calculated risk. Because each individual got their own things going on and you got to always ask yourself, is somebody actually willing to die for you? Because that's what's on the table when you're in prison. Death is on the table when you got beef. I tell y'all that all the time. When you got beef, death is on the table because you don't know what's going to happen. A scared person would kill you. You know what I'm saying? A scared person would kill you out of fear. A, a scared person would kill you out of fear will overdo what he's trying to do. He might want to stab you or try to you know, pull a knife on you to keep you up off of him, but he might be so scared that he might go overboard and he might end up stabbing you to death and that wasn't even his intent. His intent was to make sure he don't get what he's given. So he may overkill and that may cost you your life. You see what I'm saying? So you're dealing with all of these different things in prison. You're dealing with life and death. You're dealing with survival. You're dealing with the flim-flam, the skullduggery, the larceny, you know, the, the, the adapt adaptation to live in this environment the food and you by yourself man you by yourself and you have to figure it out because if you don't figure it out it would be the yeah it was something worse and what i mean by something worse is you end up being something that you never intended to be you know what i'm saying you end up doing something you never intended to do all from the loneliness and the depression of realizing that you by yourself in this world you know in this penitentiary world at that but 
this is the reason, in my opinion, that a lot of dudes have committed suicide. A lot of dudes in prison have committed suicide because of the overwhelmingness of loneliness and feeling like now you alone in this world, man. That feeling alone can be so overwhelming that it just, it's just, you know, it takes over everything in the person's being. You know, when you feel like you in this new environment, in this crazy environment, in this wild environment, and you by yourself, you got no help, you got nobody looking out for your well-being, your best interest, but you. And most times in life, that's the only time that you have ever been in that state because you never was in that state on, on the street. Like I say, you got people that come from the street that got a whole lot of different um, circumstances going on. They beefing with their family, they don't get along. But there's somebody that they got out on them streets that really got their best interests at heart for the most part. Most people, somebody going to come to your aid. Somebody going to come to your well-being. Somebody going to do something, you know what I'm saying, to, to make sure that you are right or to check on you if something do happen to you. That is not the case in prison. It can because they're not allowed to. And they don't know what's going on unless you let them know what's going on. And even when you start to let them know what's going on, sometimes it seems so far-fetched from people on the street that they don't even understand it or they think that you have already begun the process of losing your mind or you, you know, uh, uh, exaggerating or, you know, you embellishing about something because that's how different the life is, you know. And then you got the other people that come in there. They so overwhelmed and they so petrified of the environment of the violence of the way penitentiary is and in in this new life that they got to live those are the ones who succumb to falling up under protection which leads them into falling into a lifestyle that they ain't never intend to leave but all because they need to feel the comfort of knowing that they're not alone you're not alone in this. You got the dudes that join the gangs. This is why they join the gangs, because they need to feel connected to something. When you're in prison, you feel so disconnected from everything and everybody. That is crazy, man. It is crazy. You know, like I tell people all the time, prison is not just physical warfare, man. It's mental warfare. You're in a battle to keep your sanity. You're in a battle to, 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 to stay coherent, man. You know what I'm saying? In a world of chaos, in a world of misery, in a world of violence, in a world of foolishness, in a world of larceny, you trying to, you know, get all of this to, to function right. Man, I'm trying to tell you, it's, it's, it's rough. It's super rough, man. It's super rough, man. And I thank God every day, man, that I was, I was able to come through it, man, because I definitely went through all of the above, man. Like, Feeling like I'm by myself, feeling like the world caving in on me, feeling like I ain't know if I wanted to, to live, I ain't know if I could, you know, wake up every day and deal with this and go through this and handle this. Man, it's man, it's tough, man. I'm trying to tell you. That's why I preach the way I preach to these youngest man. Y'all don't know how good you actually got it until you don't have it no more. You understand? And you don't want to be in that position where you don't have it and you got to figure it out for yourself. Because some people can't figure it out. Some people can't figure it out because it ain't no mercy in there. I'm going to tell you that right now. Don't nobody care nothing about you crying and you feel by yourself and you sorry and you want to go home and you know you, you ain't going to do it no more. You messed up. Nah, it don't even work like that. That's how it worked when you're young, when you're a kid and you mess up and you get in trouble and your mom want to help you get out of it and your dad want to help you get out of it and you want to apologize and you realize now you done messed up. And, no, this is the big boy leaves now. It's the big boy leaves now. Mom and daddy word don't even count in prison. They don't care nothing about what they say. Oh, do this to my son. That man, them people don't care nothing about that. Absolutely, positively nothing. You are literally on your own now. Because you made these big decisions and then you got big consequences, you know. And um, it's, it's a lot, man. It's a lot to it's a lot to intake, man. It's a lot to deal with, man. And I've seen dudes, man, commit suicide at such a young age, man. I seen dudes commit suicide. Got ten years, ten years. You know what I'm saying? Five years. And you know when I'm saying it, as if that's not a lot. It is a lot. Anything outside of your life pulling away from your life. You know your freedom, your you know your, your your being around the people that you love, being around the things that you love to do, being able to have your own independence. Anything taken away from that is a lot. Even if it's a year, it's a lot. But I'm saying it as if 
that to them was monumental. Like they couldn't do that. I can't do 10 years. I know a friend of mine that I knew that I grew up with his brother, you know, he had caught, never been in prison in his life. And he had caught um, a little a little case where he was going to have to go do five, six years. And then he already, you know, close to 50. And he got to go do five, six years. And he felt like he couldn't do it. And he, he took his own life instead of having to go do that bit. We was just talking about another dude uh, yesterday, too. You know, RIP to him, but RIP to this dude, too. Fresh. We was just talking about Fresh the other day. Me and the youngin that came to see me. You know, shout out school, you know, and um, Fresh was in the pod with both of us. Fresh was, you know what I'm saying, a New York dude, man, slick little young dude, nice dresser, slick talker, you know, money chaser. He won't know, you know, thuggish hard dude, but he, he had that genesee quiet where he can, you know, you know, uh, slick talk his way out of situations opposed to having to rumble because he couldn't rumble. But he was a good dude, young dude. All he used to talk about was his daughter. All I got to get out there, get with my daughter. All I got to do, get out there. But he caught, he caught some, uh, he caught some, uh, uh, some H E double L L when he was in there because, like I say, he ain't got that in him to put that knife in you when you got to do it. Stick that Bethlehem in you when you got to do it. fight. You know, rumble when you, he ain't had that in him. So he caught some L's. He took some L's in there, and it was hard for him to get through that bit. But he got through it. You understand? But see, dudes get up from up under that pressure and they forget the pressure that they was under. So then he get on the street and he get to shaking and baking and doing what he doing and he chasing money again. And then next thing you know, it all ends bad. Then you get caught and now you late and then you got to go do a longer bit than you did at first. And you knew how much, you know, uh, drama, how much, you know, BS and larceny and all the stuff you had to just go through. And now you don't put yourself in a position to go through that even longer. And he couldn't take it. He couldn't take it. He couldn't even fathom the thought of going back into that type of life, knowing what he just went through. But yet at the same time, he took that chance when he came out here, you know, and he go to jail and he, before he can even get sentenced, man, he hung himself in the jail. And that was crazy, man. And me and school was sitting there talking about it yesterday. He said, man, I can't believe Fresh did that. But that's the, just the depression that you're going to have to be under when you're in prison, man. That overwhelming feeling of loneliness and missing your family and missing your kids and missing your loved ones and missing life, period. It will, you know, just, you know, take over your whole body where you just have to buckle down and just... Lock in, man, and you have to have a will to live. You know, this is how much that pressure be on you. Would literally have to exercise your will to live. To you know, exercise your will to want to continue to go on when you're dealing with these things that you're gonna have to deal with every day in prison. And I guess he figured he couldn't do that no more. You know what I'm saying? He couldn't do it no more. And I know a lot of people gonna say, "Well, why he go out there and do?" I don't know that. I can't answer that. You know what I'm saying? Knowing what he just came from, why? Me in school was asking the same question. You know what I'm saying? Why? Why would you, you know, go back into the same things? Did you think you got smarter in prison? Did you think you got sharper? Did you thought that you was going to not be able to get caught this time? Nah, it don't work that way. It don't work that way. The law of karma always comes around, man. You know, you're not going to be uh, successful and have a happy ending, man, doing something illegal. You're not going to, it's just not going to happen. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to happen. You, you're you not going to get a, 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 the good out of doing bad. You it, you know, you're going to have to take the crooked with the straights. You're going to have to take the good with the bad, man, the rain with the sunshine. So when you put yourself in those positions, man, this is always a possibility. It's always a possibility. But people try to play the odds and, and figure that they can beat that. And more often than not, they're wrong. You know what I'm saying? More often than not, they're wrong. But I, I say that to say the thought of him having to go through what he know he had to go through when he was there, just the thought of that would make a young man take his life. And, and, and I don't even and, and I don't even think Fresh was 30. He wasn't even 30 years old with a child. You understand? So that just gives y'all some type of understanding or some type of, uh, you know, Put something in your mind to let you know how much this life drains you. You know, that someone would want to die before they go through it again. This is how, and I know plenty of people 
like that today. I'm like that. I would, I, 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 I couldn't do it no more. I couldn't. You know what I'm saying? Because I, it, I had to use every bit and every ounce of resolve that I had to make it through my journey. You understand? To make it through. I think I use all of my resolve. I, 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 you know, I, I drain the tank to make it through them 33 years. God knows I did, you know, because it's been many times where I just felt like I won't go make it. You know what I'm saying? I won't go make it, you know, but I had to wake up and tell myself that again each and every day that I'm going to make it, you know what I'm saying, and remove that thought from my head, man. But I'm telling you, man, it's a rough, rough life. It's a lonely, lonely life, man, that no one... Uh, wants to be a part of, man. No one wants to be a part of it, you know. And I don't care who you are, how much love you got. If you're gone long enough, you 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 will be um, you will be almost forgotten, you know. You will be brought back up in thoughts where we'll bring them back to you. But it's going to be spaces and times and lapses where you are going to feel like you are on this planet, not just in prison, by yourself, by yourself. And that alone is overwhelming enough for anybody to question their, uh, you know, reasoning for being on this on this earth. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's real. That's real as it gets, man. So you know. Anyway, I know this is a depressing video. I know this is not not the type of video y'all thought it was gonna be, man. But this is real, man. This is real in prison, man. This is something. That these young people out here in the free world need to, you know, give some thought to, man. If you want to live that type of life, man. If you want to be, you know, feel like you're on this earth and on this planet by yourself. Now, that's one thing to say. That, oh, ain't nobody mess with me. Oh, I'm by my... Nah, it's a different thing to feel it. To feel it. To live it. That's different. Totally different. You know what I'm saying? But it's real. It's, it's super real, man. You know, loneliness and depression in prison is just... Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a daily occurrence, man. It's, it's a lifestyle. It is a lifestyle, you know what I'm saying? So if you don't ever want to live that life, man, enjoy the life that you got out here because, uh, yeah, it ain't, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't guaranteed, you know. It ain't guaranteed. It's one mistake away from being taken away from you. So enjoy it, man, and, um, you know, I'm on the road, man. I'm speaking whatever come to my mind, so y'all bear with me, man, and, uh, Appreciate you. But anyway, talk to me in the comments, man. I talk back, man. Uh, peace and love to everybody out there, man. Big love to everybody who support me. Big love to the TBP Nation. Big love to the, uh, you know, mud in the morning. You know, when y'all tap in with that foolishness, man. It's all love. It's all love, man. So y'all be safe out there. Be smart. Make good decisions, man. I'm going to make some more content for y'all, man. Boom, 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 boom. Duck them hooks, man. They out there, man. It's lonely in prison, man. It's real lonely. Banky special. Yeah, pure delicious. Pure delicious. Man. My name is uh, Banky, man. Everybody calls me Banky. That's the name that I got from my grandmother when I was young. I'm coming out here after 30 years. Yeah, I ain't got nothing, but I'm going to have something because I'm rich in personality. You know, and uh, I'm rich in love. My family love me, and that really, that's, that's really the, all that counts.